Well, good morning. Welcome back to Coffee with Nate. I'm, this is the basement edition. I got kids upstairs doing their own thing. And this is also the hat edition, and they will be hat editions from now on. It's been nine weeks since I've had a haircut, so uh, I'm wearing a hat. You get it. And so here we are. Today, I'd like to continue the conversation that we'd started uh, about meditative practices last time we did the Jesus Prayer. Um, and this time, I'd like to talk with you about Lectio Divina. And what I'm really getting at is this. Our brains are wonderful gifts from God. Great big, God gave us these great big, huge brains, and they work and they work and they work to, to solve problems. And they're even solving problems when we don't realize they're solving problems, right? I mean, the brain's an awesome thing. Uh, I'm a guitarist, and when I play the guitar, you know, and I'm learning shapes or something like that, I'm contorting my hands, and I have to kind of train my hands and the muscle in my hands to do certain things at certain times. And I'll, I'll walk away from the, that practice, and I'll come back an hour or two or maybe days later, and it's easier. And I've come to realize it's because my brain just keeps working even after I've stopped practicing. It's always solving that problem. It's such a great thing. But there do come times in our lives where we need the energy because as our brain is solving these problems, it's taking energy, rightfully so. There are times, however, when we find ourselves in situations where we need our brains maybe to slow that down a little bit when we find ourselves in situations where maybe there aren't clear solutions to problems, but our brain is trying to find them, right? And like when you are in a time of uh, crisis or trauma and your brain won't stop processing and processing, and we need to find ways to just transfer the energy that our brains use from processing towards something that might look like peace. And I can't describe it any better than that. And I think Lectio Divina does this, at least, I'm going to give you my practice of Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina or divine reading is just a way of reading scripture where you're not looking for facts and you're not looking to kind of understand historical context. You're trying to live into the experience. At least that's how I understand the process and how I'm going to explain it to you. Where you're living into the story of scripture and for a reason, because ultimately you're wanting to move your brain from the process of analyzing to resting in God. At least that's how I describe it. For example, let's take the story of Mary and Martha in the Gospel of Luke. And Jesus goes to the home of Mary and Martha, and there's an exchange, and there's all kinds of things that happen. To read it spiritually, or like in Lectio Divina, one of the ways that we might do that is instead of kind of trying to figure out the historical details or what the relationships were, we live into the story. So let's say we read that story, but we read it just to experience it. So as we're reading the story, we're the first time through, we just read the story. Then the second time through, maybe you imagine yourself as Mary. You're reading the story, but you're almost kind of living the story and playing it out. Like, what would this be like if you were seeing this through Mary's eyes? You take some time, reflect, and then come at it again. And this time, maybe from the perspective of Martha. What would it have been like to have been her at that moment? And just kind of live the story through Martha's eyes. You can, any character in scripture, you can do this with. And then the ancient practice ends with reading that story, but this time through the perspective of Christ. You know, what is God's view? And the practice was to do this enough to where by the time you were done reading the stories, you had kind of lived them. And that this practice can take a while, depending on how you do it. And in doing this, as my experience with this, one of the benefits is silence. It's peace. Because the process of living into scripture kind of gives your brain permission to stop processing information. And instead, you begin to just kind of live in the same way as when you're reading the scripture, you're not processing the story, but you're living the story. And I wish I could des describe why that happens better. I wish I understand what the neural pathways in the brain or what's happening. I wish I was better than that, at that kind of stuff. But I can tell you that it works. So maybe give that a try. You know, our wonderful brains are thinking right now in overtime because they're wanting to help us. They're wanting to solve. It's wanting to solve our problems, right? But maybe right now it's okay to tell our brains, take a rest. Let's, instead of, instead of analyzing, let's just live for a while. 
to allow our spirits, right? And I believe that the body and the brain and the spirit, these are all interconnected. I don't believe in the separation of those things. And maybe allow our spirits to take over for a while and take some of that energy. I can't say that it's going to solve every problem you've ever had. And I don't think that you're necessarily going to hear the voice of God in the silence, although maybe you will. I'm not going to suggest that you're going to come to brand new understandings of scriptures, although maybe you will. But I can promise you that in some way, this practice will allow you to give your brain permission to maybe just take a break. And I think right now that's enough. Anyway, enough from me. I hope you have a great day. Thank you for joining me. We'll talk to you soon.